Hello grade 10s, welcome to another video. Today we'll be looking at the provincial examination from June 2022. We'll just be focusing on question one, which is concept and transaction analysis for 40 marks in just 30 minutes. Cool. So let's just dive into the question and see what it has for us. Um, question one says concepts and transaction analysis. Choose the correct words from column B to match the description in column A. All right. So 1.1.1 says an example of an uncurrent asset. Uh, so for A, we have fairness, B, top balance, C, GARP, D, we have fixed deposit, and E, we have current assets. So here we're looking for an example of non-current asset, and then that would be a fixed deposit. So our answer here is D. Remember, remember that non-current assets are those that um, last for more than one year. All right. Then 1.1.2 says the management of a business should treat employees equally regardless of their positions. That should be fairness. A. And then 1.1.3, a summary of balances and totals extracted from all ledger accounts of a business. Then we're looking at the top balance. Uh, so here you need to remember your accounting cycle where we start with the CPJ and CRJ. Then we go to the general ledger. Then we go to the top balance and so on and so forth. Now, 1.1.4 assets that are convertible into cash within a period of 12 months. Remember, I just said these ones, they last for more than one period or more than one year, whereby one year is just 12 months. And then these would be your your current assets. And then lastly, we have C. And then 1.1.5 reads, commonly accepted guidelines that are followed when financial records are prepared for reporting. So that should be your core principles. So let's just fill in our answer book. So it's D, A, B, E. C. Let me just confirm. D A B E C. Okay. And then now we move to one point two. Analysis of transactions. The following transactions for March twenty twenty two appeared in the books of Naledi Traders. The business buys and sells electrical appliances to customers. Naledi Traders uses a markup of eighty percent on cost price. So this is important information. They use a markup of eighty percent on cost price right and then we are, we are required to analyze the following transactions according to the headings provided in the answer book note the business has a favorable bank balance at all times uh, and then they give us ex an example there of mr motlong paying 500 for cash for for washing the windows of the building okay it was paid 500 rands all right and then transactions 1.2.1 it says Bought goods on credit from Raleigh FS stores for 10,800, 10, less 10% 10 trade discount. So remember that when you're doing your analysis of transactions, every time there's going to be a credit in a debit, a transaction will always affect two sides. So there's going to be a credit, there's going to be a debit in each and every transaction that occurs within the business. Okay. So 1.2.1, what we have here, it says we bought goods on credit from Raleigh first stores for 10,800 less 10% trade discount. So what happened here is that we bought trading stock, trading stock, number one, uh, we bought trading stock on credit. And then we bought it for 10,800, but there was a 10% discount, which means we only paid 90%. Because if we could say 10, 100% minus 10%, that means we paid 90% of 10,800, right? So we'll just say 90% multiplied by 10,800 which will give us okay so 90% times 10800 that gives us 9720 so what happened here when you analyze the transaction we had an increase 
in trading stock, right? Because we bought stock. That means our assets increase. But now we also incurred a liability whereby we owing someone, which is Ralefa stores. So we have an increase um, in, in payables or creditors. Um, usually it's, it's, it's creditors control. We have an increase of 9,720. So we go there and then account debited. We have our trading stock because it's an asset. Remember that assets increase on the debit side. We have trading stock and then here we have creditors control. Creditors control. And here we have an, an increase of 9,720. Owner's equity, nothing happened. And then we have an increase in liabilities, 9,720, right? And then we move on to 1.2.2. Paid 450 out of the petty cash. RSA distributors, to RSA distributors for goods delivered to a debtor as small. The amount must be debited to his account, okay? So as data. Uh, S small is a debtor to the business. That means he owns, he owes us, he owes the business. Now we paid out 450 um, from the petty cash. So that means 450 will decrease from the petty cash. And we know that petty cash is the cash that we just use for random things that are, that are usually okay in the business. So petty cash is an asset, of course. It will decrease our assets. And then now we are going to debit his account. That means he will owe us more now. We're going to increase um, S Small's account. So since he's a debtor, we are debiting uh, debtor's control. Debtor's control. And then we are crediting our petty cash. Or it's, uh, it's already there. So we're going to have a decrease of 450. And then here we have a plus 450 so we have these in one place because both of these are assets now our assets will increase in terms of this guy owing us and they will decrease in terms of us paying the petty cash okay and then we move to 1.2.3 it says sold goods sold goods on credit we sold goods on credit that's uh, that's an important part to k samuels for 4500 and we issued an invoice okay that should be an easy one so what happened here if we analyze we sold goods that means stock went out 4500 of stock worth of stock ne? and then what happened also is that um we issued an invoice we sold on credit so there should be an increase of 4500 in our debtors control but remember that when we were reading the information they told us that we um sell stock at a markup of 80 percent on cost right so this should be our sales it should be uh no pardon me so this should be our cost of sales we need to calculate cost sales and then we have our sales amount we have our trading stock trading stock and then we have our debtors control so these two amounts are the same let me just move these two okay so we made sales 4,500 and debtors control 4,500 it's an increase and an increase the side so here our cost of sales will increase but our trading stock will decrease so every time you make a sale there are four transactions that are affected but it's two and two okay it's, it's four accounts that are affected right now it's time to determine the prices so our selling price here is 4,500, right? But they said we have 80% markup on cost. So what we want is 100%. What we know is 180. So selling price multiplied by cost price over um, your cost price plus 
plus markup. So this is one formula you could use to get your cost price, but this is cost price percentage. So your cost price is always 100 and then your selling price is always 100 plus your markup. Okay, so from there, let's see what our cost price is. So our cost price is 200 or uh, 2,500. So we have 2,500 here and 2,500 there. Okay, so our trading stock, we go to our assets and go to assets. Okay, so the first one is debtors control. And then here we have sales. And then we would have our, our trading stock as a credit because it's a decrease in assets. And then cost of sales, cost of sales are an expense, so they increase on the debit side. So here it's our uh, assets, 2,500, we subtract, and then we, in, um, we decrease our owner's equity by 2,500 also, because cost of sales decrease our owner's equity, okay? And then here we add, 4,500 and also add 4,500 liabilities nothing happened there and then we move on to 1.2.4 okay 1.2.4 so 1.2.4 says a printer bought on credit we bought it on credit for office use for 2,400 from Russell traders in February 2022 had a defect, which is was uh, it means it was faulty. Now, after consultation with Rosso traders, the printer was returned to them. No transaction was recorded. So we bought a printer, and then the printer was then um, returned. So what happened here is that we bought it on credit. We never paid cash for it, right? But we what we did was at in, initially we increased our equipment as an asset because this is a printer, we're using it for office use. So we increased our equipment. And then the next thing what we did is increase our liability since we increased, uh, we bought on credit. Now what we're gonna do is do the actual um, opposite of that. So we're gonna decrease our liabilities and then we're gonna also decrease our assets because we are retaining it now. We no longer have that asset. And then we no longer owing them. That's why we are decreasing the liability. So it is 2,400. So creditors control 1.2.4. Then here we have equipment. So our assets will decrease by 2,400. And then our liabilities will also decrease by 2,400. And then our bank, 1.2.5. It says we received 3,400 from K Abrahams. He's a debtor in settlement of his of, of her account or to her. Okay. So we received 3,400 um, in settlement of her account of 3,500. So she was settling her account of 3,500. Now, how does she pay 3,400 whereas she owes the business 3,500? that would mean that the business offered her what we call discount allowed so maybe she has paid on time and then we decided no let's just give her a discount um let's just take 100 rands of what she owes us so the discount comes as an expense expense to the business so discount allowed it comes in as an expense to the business right so what what happens here in this transaction is that we are going to record our bank it will increase by 3.4k and then we are going to decrease our um, debtors control by 3400 right so we have our debtors control here debtors control so debtors control will decrease so both of these are assets and then we received 3,400, but debtor's control will decrease by 3,400 because now she owes us less, or we could just say she no longer owes us, okay? And then now we have our discount 
allowed okay sorry okay and then we have data control again data control so now this is the 100 range remember that discounts allowed is an expense so it will decrease our assets um at 100 bucks and expenses always affect our owner's equity and then it will decrease by 100 rands okay so i just realized i never explained that here sales also affect our owner's equity that is why we increased our owner's equity by 4500 so income and expenses always affect our owner's equity okay and then just heading to the last one 1.2.6 1.2.6 says a loan repayment of 44,000. Okay, so a loan repayment of 44,000 to pre, to PEM Bank included an interest included an interest of 10% per annum for one year. Funds were paid via EFT. So here we paid. Of course, when you pay something, you know there's bank involved. We decrease 44,000 okay but the forty-four thousand here it includes interest right so we have to separate interest and repayment because interest alone is an expense interest is an expense and the repayment is part of liabilities so expenses they affect our owner's equity and then liability, uh, uh, the repayment, it just affects um, liabilities. Now, we are told that the loan repayment is 44000 in total. So that means there's 10% of interest in the 44000 Now, how do we do this? So in the 44000 there's 100% and there's 10%. So we could say this is the repayment. This is the payment. This is interest. All right. So what we want from this whole thing is, is to separate the interest from the repayment. So we have 44,000 multiplied by 100 over 110. So I'd say the interest plus the repayment is 110. All right. So what we want here is the repayment. which is equal to 4,400 over 110. So that's 40,000. And then that means if you take 44,000 minus 40,000, you will get 4,000 as interest. All right, so I hope that is clear and then we could go and fill in our table there what we decrease is our loan this side because remember that a loan is a liability and liabilities increase on the credit side and decrease on the debit side so we are decreasing our loan hence you see it on the debit side okay and then here again we we will decrease our assets by 40,000 because we paid our bank is decreasing but we also decreasing our liabilities by 40,000 because our liability which is the loan is also decreasing now we have interest on loan or someone could say interest expense depends so now account credited is your bank also because we have paid Four thousand, and interest on loan is an expense not a liability hence it goes to our owner's equity right then that concludes our session for today thank you to everyone who has tuned in don't forget to subscribe don't forget to like share and drop a comment um, on any accounting topics that you might need help with um, see you in the next video cheers